You need three things, I think, for a day's blackberrying. Plenty of blackberry bushes with a good crop of fruit, a stick with a crooked handle to enable you to get at the fruit, and finally a basket to put them in. A mushroom basket makes a very good container. And keep your eyes open when you are out blackberrying, because otherwise you'll miss a great deal of interest. Be very selective in how you pick the fruit. I myself don't pick any blackberries until they've got properly black. On the other hand, I don't pick any that look as if they're rather past their best. They get a sort of a dark velvety bloom on them when they reach that stage, and they also feel soft to the touch. Leave them for the insects to enjoy. You see, blackberries get attacked by various creatures, and once the skin has been penetrated, creatures like flies and even moths can come and drink from the fruit. Now, some people will wear gloves when they're picking blackberries. I don't myself. I just take care how I pick the fruit, because those hook thorns can be very sharp indeed. The willow herb now going to seed and a lovely red admiral butterfly on the willow herb flowers. I've seen a great many red admirals during the past week. It's nice to pick blackberries on a fine sunny day because I think if the fruit are wet, there's a great danger of them being a bit on the mildew side. So I like to have a good sunny dry day if I'm going blackberrying. Now I line my basket incidentally with foil there so that it doesn't become impregnated with the juice. That again tends to produce mildew if you allow this to happen. Well, it's not a bad thing at the start of the day to secrete something cool to drink. And then if you make your way back to the starting point by lunchtime, you can collect your picnic and something to wash it down with. And I've brought along some rough cider in an old Wilshire harvest bottle. And this is something that I like to have with me on a day like this. The pottery keeps the cider very cool indeed, especially if you leave it in the shade at the time you start out in the morning. Well, my wife, I've no doubt, has put me up a very tasty picnic. We'll come to that in a minute. First things first. Rough cider, the stuff they call scrumple or stunnum, a little bit sharp but wonderfully thirst-quenching. Let's turn our attention now to the picnic basket and the modest viands we brought out for the day. Hard work this, a man needs to restore his failing tissues. Half a cold roast fowl, some fresh salad from my own garden, and something to dress it with. I make the dressing myself before I leave home. It's a simple vinaigrette dressing of three parts oil to one of vinegar, a little mustard and some pepper and salt. And to tart up the salad there, a bit of green pepper. Dress it now with that vinaigrette and just toss the salad gently so that it's all properly in contact with the dressing. Again, at lunchtime, this is the time to keep your eyes open. There's a great deal can be happening all around you and you don't want to miss it. A close relative of the water vole this is the bank vole, a little chap who lives in the grasses. He likes undergrowth. The other vole, the short-tailed vole, is more a creature of the open plain and the grass. And it's creatures like that that the kestrel is looking for. The squirrel has his harvest at this time of the year, the acorn harvest. And there are a good many squirrels about on this day, not taking very much notice of me, I may say. Well, with this basket of mine still only half full, I had to get on, because it holds all together some six pounds of blackberries, and by the time I came into lunch, I reckon I had no more than three.
Around about mid-afternoon, I reckon, I got six pounds of fruit. And I was delighted to see the speckled wood come down and indulge in this little pirouetting dance on my basket. The Dolce Vita 